Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to take a look at a surface grinder project. Uh, several weeks ago, it might have been a month ago now, Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools uh, completed a series of videos he was doing on some adjustable V-blocks. And in that final video, I caught a glimpse of a uh, jig he was using on his surface grinder to chamfer the edges of the metal V-blocks he was making. I started a thread over on the uh, Facebook YouTube uh, machinist group and asked if anyone knew anything about that. I, I know Tom uh, has an account on Facebook, but uh, I don't think he checks it that much. But I tagged him just in case, and uh, the, the thread st stirred up a uh, right good conversation. A lot of people uh, uh, went and looked at the video, were interested in it, but no one really had any idea of uh, how it was made or, uh, or, or when it was made. So I decided to see if uh, I could uh, contact uh, Tom directly. Uh, I did through his email that's listed on his videos and asked him about the block and if he had a video on making it or had a drawing on it or whatever. And he replied right back to me, very, very pleasant individual. Uh, he replied right back and said uh, that little clip in the video had started quite a lot of interest and uh, he would uh, be doing a video shortly on making that block. So I waited patiently, and it wasn't but just a, I don't know, a short period later. I, I don't think it was much over a week, if, if that long. He posted a video of making another one of the jigs. The first one that he made, and the one I saw in, uh, in his uh, final video on the adjustable V-blocks, was made from tool steel, uh, I later found out. The one he did in the video, he made from a big block of Delrin. And in that video, uh, and I, again, I'll try to post links up here to, uh, to both of the uh, videos uh, so that you can get an idea of what, I'm, what I saw and what he did. But uh, in that video, he made available a PDF. Just email him, ask him for the PDF on the surface grinder chamfering block. And I did, and he immediately sent it to me. Now, I didn't have any Delrin, and I don't have a piece of tool steel that big, but I did order a piece of aluminum. So I'm going to zoom the camera in now and show you my finished product of making it. And I didn't try to video it because, again, like I say, Tom just did a video on doing that. Uh, but uh, uh, I want a video today actually using it and explaining a little bit about it. So I'm going to zoom the camera in on it. And we're going to take a closer look at it. All right, here's the, uh, the jig I was talking about. Uh, mine is made out of a piece of 2 inch thick by 7 inches long by 4 inches high aluminum block. 2 by 4 by 7. Now, just like Tom, uh, when he made his uh, one out of Delrin, he had to attach a plate to the bottom of it. And I've attached a, uh, uh, just a cold roll steel plate to the bottom. Uh, you can see uh, I actually uh, put some JB Weld in the holes just to keep uh, dust and uh, grindings from building up in the holes. But that's attached to the bottom, and that allows it to adhere to the uh, uh, surface grinder mag chuck. Now, from the side, as if we look at it, we see there's a 45 degree angle on the PDF. Uh, Tom explicitly says the height of this and the depth. Now the way I did mine, I set it up on, a, uh, on an angle plate and milled out this 45 degree angle through here. I did not put the relief in right here until later. That was actually the last step. Uh, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But then I turned it around to the back, and I'm not sure there's enough contrast there. Maybe you can see. 
there's a pocket in the back of it that the wheel mounts in or this sets over the wheel with the surface grinder in place this will mount over go back over the wheel and the wheel is exposed in this groove in here now the more worn your wheel is or the larger it is the more exposure you will have down here again the way that fits in that just sets in being sure you you're leaving clearance on each side now there was a lot of discussion on that uh, Facebook thread about and it was good discussion uh, but there was a lot of discussion about how to dress the side of the wheel and if you would dress a relief from here out so that you were only cutting with the edge of it. Uh, it was even suggested maybe of using a cup wheel. Now with a cup wheel you would have just a minimum edge over here making the uh, making the grind. And I thought about different ways, and we talked about in that thread different ways of dressing the face of the wheel uh, to put some relief again in this area, but to leave this exposed or leave a cutting around the edge. But again, I contacted Tom and asked him if uh, if he dressed any relief on the side of his wheel, and he said no. The only thing he did was do a vertical dress on it. Uh, so that there was, if there was any wobble in the wheel at all, that took that out. So we're going to turn over to the surface grinder now, and I'm going to do a, uh, uh, a dress of my wheel on the face. Then we're going to set this block up, and I've got a couple of pieces prepared already that we're going to uh, grind on there or put the, the uh, chamfer on. These are surface ground. Uh, all six sides or all six surfaces and they've got the the very sharp edges and points just like you would expect off a surface grinder as a matter of fact there's just a little bit of a a, a burr rolled right there and we're going to see how well this takes it out i've got this piece that's about a three quarter inch square here and then i've got a piece that's uh let's see about about two inches by two and a half inches by 0.4 thick. So we're going to try and put, or we're going to not try, I think we're going to be successful, but we're going to put a chamfer, chamfer on all of the edges, including these, these little short edges. So let me get set up over at the surface grinder, and I'll be right back. Okay, for anyone that's uh, new to my channel, this is a Harry super 612 uh, surface grinder that i've had i don't know a couple years now maybe uh, a little over a year mag chuck on it now i'm going to open up the uh the guard here just enough so that everybody can see what's going on and we're going to dress the face of this wheel to do that in that same thread on facebook there was a lot of discussion about how you would dress the face of the wheel. And uh, Stefan even said that he took his vice, I'm sure something similar to this, mounted it on the chuck on its side, and put his diamond dresser in there and moved the table up and down. What I'm going to use, this is a a uh, wheel dresser that can go in the top. Your your diamond dresser can go in the top so that it points up, and of course this adjusts up and down, uh, or it can go out here on the front. What this is good for is being able to, uh, if you happen to have your wheel way up high or even down low, you can dress your wheel with not, without having to make a whole lot of changes uh, to the position of your wheel. But I'm going to get this set up. I 
and I'm going to move the axis in uh, just enough till we start till we touch that face, and then I'll raise the wheel up and down and dress that. All right, one one more thing I'm going to mention here. Uh, when I dress my wheels, I always like to lock the table down, and this surface grinder did not come with a lock for this axis. But it does have these bumpers on the, the table on each end, which could have been moved into this stock. But what I did, and it may be hard to see, but this is a, just a three quarter inch uh, post through the chassis of the surface grinder. What I did was take that off and drill and tap it for a piece of quarter 20. As long as I remembered it being something like that. Then when I get ready to lock this down, and it's to me it's more important to lock it down when I'm dressing the wheel or dressing the uh, edge of the wheel uh, because I always put the dresser on the uh, just beyond center. Uh, I don't want it on this way because if something goes wrong it would try to grab it and probably tear the wheel up. But with it being on the back side it can push it away if something were to go wrong. Here we don't want this axis to move. So I'm just going to bring that in again until I touch. Always, always, always wear eye protection when you're dressing a wheel. Because those little rocks are flying everywhere right now. Alright, that's got a pretty clean dress. But I'm going to go in down here on my wheel. I'm going to go in about two more thousandths and then come down. Oh, I went two thousandths in the wrong direction. And to keep from crashing anything, I'm just going to get the wheel up and out of the way before I move anything. Alright, now that we got a good dress on that, I can get the, the diamond dresser out of the way. Alright, remember we got a steel plate on the bottom. And I do have a fence on this. And this fence has been ground the edge of it so that it's uh, perpendicular in line with the wheel. I'm going to set that on bow on the center and mag it down. Now we'll bring the table in. And our wheel down. Now what I'm looking for right now is I want to leave a little gap on each side. And then I'm going to lock the table down again. So it cannot move in this direction. Now to get the depth, uh, Tom doesn't, didn't explain that in his videos, uh, or he didn't show it on the PDF, but a little bit of common sense uh, dictated that if you take something like a, a block with a good sharp edge on it, place it up in there, and then advance just till you touch the wheel, you will have a starting a point to start with. All 
right? So let me spin it back up again. And again, normally this will be done with the uh, uh, with the guard in place, but I don't think you'd be able to see much. So I'm going to put this, hold this in place, and I'm going to easily advance this in until I just start seeing some sparks. All right, I heard it just start grinding right there. So down here on my wheel, graduated wheel, <clears throat> I'm going to set that to zero. Now, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I had no idea to start with of how much depth to go with. And that depth is going to be dependent on how deep you want or how deep you want your uh, chaffers to be. I started out with five thousandths. That was just barely showing, but it didn't put any real drag on the wheel. Tried ten thousandths. That's still not quite enough. So I went to fifteen thousandths. And for me, fifteen thousandths was a good, uh, a good number to advance in. So I'm going to advance in fifteen thousandths. And there's there's a lock on this table. Uh, down here, I'll try to get a picture of that later to show it to you. But I'm going to lock the table down. Now, the table is froze now. It cannot move in the X or the Y axis. Uh, and I've, uh, on the Z axis, I've gone in 15 thousandths. When I first looked at this and thought of this whole concept, I'm thinking now we're going to be uh, on the uh, edge of our edge of our wheel face or face grinding and then after the first time I used it I saw where there was no need of putting a relief on the wheel so that you were only cutting with the outside edge because that's all we're going to be cutting with anyhow once we get just you know a few millimeters in we've got the chamfer made and so the rest of the wheel is clear but I'm going to take one of these long axes, I'm going to set it up in the V, and you'll notice the sparks are only going to be right, in, right at the beginning. I have no idea how well you can see it. We'll get some close-up cam, close camera shots on the workbench a little bit later. But that put a perfectly even chamfer all the way down. Alright, let's do another surface. Another edge. four long edges. I'm going to go across them one more time. This time I'm going to flip it. Very little contact at all. Alright, so we've got the four edges. Now let's do the ends.
All right, as you might have noticed, I was struggling just a little bit keeping this straight up in there. And anything really even, probably an inch or less, 25 millimeter or less, probably need a guide block. So on this next piece that I'm going to do, which is the very thin piece, we'll use a grind block or I, we'll use a guide block when we get ready to do these edges. But I'm going to do the long, long edges first. Again, I like to make an extra pass just to clean up any burrs that the, that the chamfering and deep burring might have, might have created. Again, we'll get some close-up shots of this over on the workbench uh, when we get all the surfaces done. But we've got a good uniform chamfer on all of these edges. Now, to get this short edge, what Tom used, he set a one, two, three block up and held that. And I'm guessing his one, two, three block had enough chamfer on it already that it didn't uh, didn't hit the wheel. But what I've done is made a just a push block and on this side right here I actually chamfered put a 25 uh, moved the table in 25 thousandths so I know that's that's never going to touch. So we're going to set the block up here hold it in place So now we have the eight long surfaces, long edges, and the four short ones. Now I'm not sure how much depth you could do this uh, without putting a bind, side wheeling bind on your surface grinder. Mine I'm running, this is a uh, 220 three phase uh, surface grinder. I'm running it off a of VFD over here that's being fed with a 120 volt single phase. And out of this VFD, I'm coming out with 220 three phase. It's got the RPMs just like it should, got plenty of power for what grinding I'm doing now, but I can stall that wheel if I try to take much more than three, four thousandths at the time when I'm depth grinding. In this, going in in this direction, we're working on an edge here. So we don't have a whole surface, we don't have a lot, lot of surface contact. But this 15 thousandths that I got here, I might well go to 20 thousandths. But if I was gonna do a chamfer any larger than 20 thousandths on this depth, I would probably do it in increments of say, 50, no more than 15 thousandths at a time. Just do all the surfaces, move this in just a little bit. Now while this is spinning, and I'm not going to get my fingers too close, but I want to zoom the camera in on the wheel so that you can see maybe a little bit of, of the discoloration. As you can see, in this surface in here, it's still white from the dressing. 
and right over here we're getting just a little bit of wear. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but maybe uh, there's maybe half inch where it's a little bit darker, but no more than an eighth inch where it looks like that 90% of the grinding was happening. So now I think it's time we move back over there to the workbench and I'll try to get you some close-up shots of these so that you can see just how clean looking well actually those are showing up fairly decent right there Okay, again, I hope <clears throat> this is showing up good in the camera, but what we have, again, is a good uniform chamfer on all the edges, and this is coming to a nice point where the three chamfers intersect. That was the piece of flat bar, the square bar again. What we have is a nice uniform is, is the key word I think in all this. It's a uniform depth chamfer on all edges. All right, so here's one more look at the uh, uh, Tom Lipton surface grinder chamfering block. Again, this is two or started out as a two inch by seven inch by four inch uh, piece of aluminum stock. I did put it in the uh, uh, vise on the uh, mill and did a fly cut on all the, all the surfaces. And I said at the beginning of the video, I will explain why I left this to last. The reason I did that, Tom on his drawings gives you the exact depth, what the length of this leg of the 45 should be, what that distance here should be, and what this distance over here is. But as I say, I put this on the fly cutter. It was a piece of extruded aluminum to begin with, so it wasn't exactly two inches. Uh, and when I dressed it down, I probably dressed I don't know, 30 thousandths off of it. But I put my 45 in here, then I set it up in the mill and milled this out with a 5 8 inch uh, end mill. And the depth, I went depth on it. He shows on his PDF that this gap should be about a quarter, about an eighth of an inch wide. So I just used a piece of eighth inch material as a test block and milled down until I got a good surface there uh, that was right at 125 thousandths. Then to get the distance of this relief in here, I simply with a small end mill, I think that was a 1 8 end mill, I just went depth enough so that if I set a square edge in there, it would clear there wouldn't be a bump going from this transition into the cutting groove. I just wanted to be sure this relief was a little bit deeper than what a 90 degree block in there would be. So as you can see, that travels, travels through fine. Tom said in his last video that if you were interested in the PDF, just simply drop him an email and he would send one to you. And he did. He sent me the uh, PDF uh, again within a matter of hours, really. I think I did it late one night here at Eastern Time. He's on the West Coast, and by the next morning, uh, when I checked my email, I had it. So 
if you would like to build one, contact him and ask for the PDF. I know I've done made a lot of little tools and gadgets and jigs here in the tin barn, but this is one that I can see getting a lot of use out of it. As a matter of fact, I'll probably get it set back up. I got dozens of items around the tin barn that I've made that needs a good uniform chopper on the edge. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care. Tom, I thank you for the, uh, uh, your responses to my emails and for sending the PDF. Take care. Mm -hmm.